Good morning, everybody. Uh, so nice to see all of you, all these faces. Uh, welcome to the annual University of Waterloo English Awards Ceremony. Uh, and we'd like to start off our award ceremony, ceremony with a land acknowledgement. The University of Waterloo acknowledges that much of our work takes place on the traditional territory of the Neutrals and the Shinopig and Haudenosaunee peoples. Our main campus is situated on the Haldeman Track, the land granted to the Six Nations that includes six miles on each side of the Grand River. Our active work towards reconciliation takes place across our campuses through research, learning, teaching, and community building, and is coordinated within the Office of Indigenous Relations. So after two years of virtual ceremonies because of the pandemic, we're embarking on an experiment this year, a hybrid ceremony that's taking place both here in this room and online using a Zoom live stream. We think this will be a great way to celebrate the amazing talents of our students and the diverse course offerings and subject areas of our department. And we do indeed have very talented students. Every year when we look through the submitted essays and projects and we read the judges' comments about the winners, we're blown away with what great thinkers, researchers, and creators and writers we have here amongst our undergraduate and graduate students. So how about we just start with a round of applause for everybody who submitted the creative writing and their essays or had it working on it. So as you can see in your program, we're dividing the program up uh, into those students who are present here today, either right here in the room or remotely, and, uh, and those followed by those students who aren't available to attend in either way. Um, we have some creative writing readings to present, and we also have some, some of which are live and some of which are pre-recorded. And uh, those of you at home can see the students get their awards and can watch the slideshow of the judges' comments and winner's photos that will play on the screen behind the podium. Um, and everyone who's logged into the Zoom can actually type their congratulations into the chat uh, of the Zoom space. And you can see your praise appear here and so can the people who are receiving the awards. Um, even if you're here in the room, you can actually um, type your comments into the chat as well. So if you want to do it on your phone, you just need to take out your phone and take a picture of the uh, QR code and you'll log right into the presentation. But if you could please just put your keep your phones on mute so that we don't get any echoing happening. And of course you can clap like mad when students come up to get their awards or when they're watching the announcements, uh, announcement of their award win from home. So this is how it's going to work. We'll get started. So we're going to just call up the faculty presenters one by one to announce the winners and to present the students with their certificates. So when you're called up as a faculty presenter, you don't have to, you're, what you're going to be reading from, the, the sheet that has to do with uh, your award is right here at the front. So just come on up behind the podium. The sheet will be right in front of you along with the certificate if the person is here. If the person is not here, then they'll just be the sheet with no certificate. So please read your, read your uh, sheet and then proceed to But if your winner is here, when your name is called students, please come up to the front. As soon as you hear your name, your presenter will meet you and then you can exchange the certificate, shake hands and call to their coach. After which, all right, so I have the pleasure of presenting the first award, actually. And we'll start off with the undergrad awards. And the first two awards are the, uh, for the Albert Shaw Poetry Award. And this award is given in memory of hockey player and poetry lover, Albert Shaw. And our winner this year is Nicole Cow who is attending remotely. And the judge's comments on this award were, the poet uses multiple languages with provocative illustrative messages. Deserving special praise is excerpt, describing challenges faced by Chinese immigrants to Canada. The honorable mention for this award goes to I.S. Bashira, who is not able to attend today. The judge's comments were, the author takes large geopolitical issues facing the global south and global north, including nationalisms, arbitrary borders, armed fences, and in particular, gendered violence, translating these issues to the personal. We'll now have a recorded reading 
by Nicole Kenner. Where there is water, there is never ending movement. Arteries cross and fork, blue veins on pale skin. So even fish born in Asia arrive in the Great Lakes. Where there is water, there is washing and ironing for cheap. A man from China arrives on a snow covered pier, yellow and hungry. Four cents for a pair of cuffs, five cents for three handkerchiefs, seven cents for an undershirt, and 25 cents for a dozen collars. There is a man doing women's work where there is water. There's a green scum on the surface. The carp escapes to nibble on it, yellow and hungry. There is a fish doing women's work, where there is water. The ad in the window reads, white laundry without bleaching. They use hydrogen peroxide, baking soda, vinegar, salt, talc to scrub, twist, rinse, and wring. The man wipes sweat from his forehead. The newspaper reads, the carp is tenacious, the carp is bottom feeding, the carp spreads, the carp invades, the carp dominates. Where there is water. The man watches water drain yellow coffee stains from another man's white collar. Where there is water, there is work. Where there is soil, there is home. Whoa. Okay, if I could now um, call on Ken Graham to come up and present the award in American Literature and Culture. There you go. So am I supposed to look at a camera here? No, it's, 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 it's just standing. Yeah, it's covering. One of those 360 degree things? Exactly. Okay. It's exciting. All right. Well, the award in, uh, in American Literature and Culture is given each year to the year's outstanding essay in American Literature. This year's winner is Rihanna Safia, and uh, she won for an essay titled A Dark Side of Romance, Domestic Violence in Love Story Magazine. The judges uh, said that this was a great analysis of misrepresentations of domestic violence in a popular 1930s U.S. pulp magazine. Found it well-written, richly researched, and convincingly argued. So it's Rihanna here. Okay. So meet me at the end. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, so the Andrew James Dugan Prize in Literature is given each year to the best essay written on a literary question or subject and submitted in a 300 or 400 level class in the past calendar year. This year we had two uh, superb um, submissions and luckily we we're able to give two awards. So the first winner is Jared Kubia. For his, for his essay, The Sword of Vengeance Collapses in Exhaustion, Cycles of Racial Violence in Beowulf. The, uh, the judges called this a model undergraduate essay. They said that the development of the thesis is superb, highlighted by sharp focus, strong organization, clear transitions, and well-chosen evidence. The writing throughout is notable for clarity and grace, and the rare ability to construct, then argue against, con arguments. So congratulations, Jared. The second winner is Marina Dobokan for her essay, The Ethics of Representation in Mouse. Uh, the judges thought that this was a fluently written and well-organized essay with well-supported claims. They thought it was particularly perceptive about how Spiegelman represents this his personal relationships to the content and experiences depicted in the work. So again, congratulations, Marina. Uh, could we now call on Marcelo Gorman to come up and present the Canadian Literature Prize and others? <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you. I um, also want to thank all the organizers for putting this together. The kind of a, it's a kind of a reunion for the English department actually to be here in an embodied form. It's, it's great. Um, so I'm presenting the Canadian Literature Prize, and the winner this year is Emma Smith, who is here today. Hi, Emma. Um, the submission title was Uncanny Unreliability, Conflicting Identity in Southern Ontario Gothic in Monroe's Miles City, Montana. And the judge's comments say this about the essay, a thoughtful and lucid essay that explores the dissonance created by conflicting various roles Alice Monroe's narrator must fulfill, the story's invocation of the uncanny and Monroe's invitation to the reader to forecast the future. Well done. The uh, next award <laughs> is the Diaspora and Transnational Studies Prize presented by Marcelo Gorman. <laughs> This award is for the best essay or creative project on a subject related to diaspora, transnational and or post-colonial topics submitted for an English course in the past calendar year. This award is made possible by English alumna, Sarah Cannon. And the winner this year is Amaya Kodetuwaku, who is in person, is here? Yes. So uh, the submission title was Love Does Not Conquer, It Crafts. Repudiation of Unconditional Love Through Hamid's Exploration of Migrant Identity in Exit West. And the judges said, are you ready for this? The judges said, it's a thoughtful exploration of love in the time of war and displacement in Mohsin Hamid's novel, Exit West, showing how the two protagonists experience the promises, but also the limits of love. A careful analysis rendered in well-crafted form and language. Congratulations. <laughs> okay, thank you. My turn. So the next award is the Donald R. and Mary E. Snyder Literary Award for Excellence in Nonfiction Writing. And this is for the best written document in nonfiction writing, either a rhetorical research essay on a speech or a piece of life writing. And the winner who's attending remotely today is Emma Joan Watson, who actually was in my 309G class, so I'm very proud of this. The title of her work was The Volume of Queer, A Counter Story. And the judges called it a narrative that skillfully weaves together personal recollections with critical theories of gender. Using playful and evocative language, this story offers a persuasive critique of gender binaries grounded in the author's lived experience. It's a truly compelling and beautifully crafted narrative. So congratulations. The next award is the English Society Creative Writing Award for Poetry. And uh, Ayas Bashira has won this award and she's unable to attend today. The judges commented that the poetry reveals emotions and experiences related to loss and potential, whether vicariously or immediately experienced, expectations and the complexities of inheritance. And Ayas Bashira has kindly uh, um, let me read her poem today, or two poems, so I'll do that now. The first one's called In Brampton, The Last Juma Before Eid. Last year, after the lockdowns lifted, still hungry, I sat with you in the masjid parking lot in your mom's car. The boys were in the abandoned van where they were breaking their rosa with a joint. I sat with you in the masjid parking lot. You showed me the screen of your blue iPhone. It lit up the abandoned van where they were breaking their rosa with a joint. They were passing it around like it was shisha. The first Ramadan, you showed me the screen of your blue iPhone. It lit up your Instagram, set to public. The boys were looking. They were passing it around like it was shisha. The first Ramadan, you posted about the Uret March, despite the comments, that summer when your Instagram set to public. The boys were looking at the picture of you wearing a dress that didn't cover your knees. You posted about the Uret March, despite the comments, that summer when you went out and held a Sprite at the pub with your friends, smiling at the picture of you wearing a dress that didn't cover your knees. They kept staring, their eyes red and angry, because you went out and held a Sprite at the pub with your friends, smiling, complete. Without a dupata to drag through the dirt, 
They kept staring, their eyes red and angry because in your mom's car, the boys were incomplete without a dupata to drag through the dirt. Last year, after the lockdowns lifted, still hungry. And the second poem is called, When Your Nana Abu Passed Away. That winter, when your Nana Abu died, it was November, 2008. You were in the second grade. You couldn't feel the loss. You never met him. You ate fried chicken at Yakala's house while your mom flew home to her house in the village to see him one last time to say goodbye. Her concrete house in the village with its courtyard in the middle where she and your four khalas would climb the fruit tree up to the roof to play a game, dropping ears of corn down the gutter. He died after she left and she still remembers him like that, waving her goodbye. You only know him as a ghost. The man who, two days after your parents' wedding, told her that if she wanted it, he would arrange for a divorce. The man who couldn't read, but told her she could stay in school as long as she wanted, and he would pay for it, telling her to get a PhD. And your mum, so tired now, holding on to her patience like she thinks it will save her, your mum, who thought you would be a boy, ready to name you Husnan, for two sons at his funeral. Neighbors came from every surrounding village with stories of how he helped them when they were desperate. The women sat outside while the men surrounded him in the graveyard, lowering him into the ground, throwing clumps of dirt onto his shroud, remembering what it meant to fear something, remembering that they will die too. And finally, the English Society, not finally, for me, finally, the English Society Creative Writing Award for Prose goes to Nicole Cow, who we've already met and who is attending remotely and watching today, for the titled um, uh, piece of prose, Washing Stories. And the judges said, this author creates worlds of people, things, reality, and imagination. And it was a pleasure to read these stories. And we have another reading from Nicole Cow. Analog. Mr. Wong had owned the watch for a long time, since before the Cultural Revolution, before he came to Canada on a boat, and before he took over the laundry shop on the corner of Main Street from Mr. Lee. It had a round face and brown leather strap that was still glossy because he never wore it when he was working, only on Sundays when he met with the other wifeless Chinese men in Galt for a game of mahjong. In those days, he had done all the work himself by hand. He was proud to boil and wash and wring and starch and iron and fold and package until past midnight while his children slept in the apartment above. In the years after, between running a business and a family, no one knows when the watch started ticking slow, but it was sometime after his laundry closed, after his son and daughter had both graduated from university with degrees in medicine and mechanical engineering when he finally noticed. The first time it was because he missed the bus by two whole minutes. He turned the small dial on the side and adjusted the minute hand forward by two minutes, then thought no more of it. The incident slipped his mind until the following Tuesday, when he was eight minutes late to a meeting with the real estate agent who was selling his house, which had too many empty bedrooms. He turned the minute hand forward by eight minutes. No matter how many times he adjusted the watch, the lateness continued, and the time disparities became more and more severe. 15 minutes late to this, half an hour late to that, and finally a full hour late to a doctor's appointment to check on his heart. By this time, Mr. Wong had made it a weekly ritual to adjust the watch to align with the time on his smartphone. Once a week became once every morning, then once every hour, until he was checking the in his every idle moment, which constituted the majority of his waking life anyway, now that the shop had closed and the storefront sold to an appliances dealer, and that the children were grown up. He twisted the silver arm forward, then backward again, because he had twisted too much, then forward again, because the present time on his phone had by now changed to a new time. The cycle repeated for hours as he sat, shoulders hunched up to his ears, nose lowered to the edge of the kitchen table, glaring intently down at his bulbous reflection in the glass face clenched tightly between his thumb and forefinger. Sometimes he held his breath in concentration to suppress the quiver in his fingers for a few moments. The rice cooker could beep, or his phone could chime, or the vacuum could roar from the next room, but he wouldn't look up from the watch. Only on days when he had some appointment, 10 minutes before the bus arrived at the edge of his driveway, would he get up suddenly and put on his shoes, not wanting to be late?
Hey, could we have Victoria Lamont come up and present the English Undergraduate Award for Academic Excellence? Thank you. Okay, it is uh, my pleasure to present the English Undergraduate Award for Academic Excellence. There are two winners today. Um, and I'd like to welcome first um, Amayo Kuditiwaku. Uh, this award is based on academic excellence for year two, three, or four undergraduate students in honors English. And our second winner is Emma Smith. Oh, I think I gave you yes. two. <laughs> I knew I would say something. <laughs> And I'm also very pleased to present the Hibbard Prize for Shakespeare Studies to Nadia Formisano. Come on up, Nadia. This award uh, is for the year's outstanding essay on Shakespeare. Um, the judges commented that uh, with sharp analysis and deft close reading, this essay parses the differences between the 2001 film O oh, and Shakespeare's play Othello in utterly convincing and compelling ways. Congratulations. Is Nancy Mattes in the room? Okay, I will be presenting this award then. Um, the Olive Carrick Scholarship in English, which this is the inaugural year for this award, it's brand new, is given to a student enrolled in year three or four of the literature program in the Department of English, based on academic excellence combined with extracurricular involvement in the arts and culture sector. And our winner this year is Arabella Harim Abid. Are you here? There you are. Um, the judge's comments, the judge's comments, uh, the judges were moved and impressed by Arabella Harim Abid's application, her grades, her arts and opinion journalism in her campus and imprint, her work as a musician, and her involvement as vice president of operations with the UW English Society all speak to her commitment to writing in the arts. She has also done extensive work with RAYS, a U Waterloo student-based service that addresses racism and xenophobia. In RAISE, she was involved with the organization of arts-based activities, such as poetry nights and gallery trips, and encouraged community building through culture among BIPOC students through events such as the Exchanges Conference. Her activities exemplify the aims of the Olive Carrick Scholarship in English. And if I could now call up Brianna Weens. So this award is for the Rhetoric and Digital Design Award um, for the best digitally based project completed in an English class at Waterloo. So if Sage and Carr could come up. So this project is a totally ambitious project with really clear stakes, interrogating how interlocking social factors, including gentrification, structural racism and displacement are creating housing crises in Waterloo region. Uh, and the website itself was technically and aesthetically sophisticated with really excellent photography to illustrate the urgency of the issue.
And for the next award, can I please call up Professor Lamont? Thank you. Uh, my name is George Lamont, and it is my pleasure to present the Rhetoric and Professional Writing Award, which goes to the student who, whose work is the best example of technical communication, professional writing, textual editing, or paper-based design completed in an English class or an English co-op work term. I'm delighted to present this award to our winner this year, Hafsa Hassan, whose submission, The Ethics of Arrive Can, How the Government Hinders Public Trust by Implementing Mandatory Technologies, was a fantastic example of the good work that gets done in these courses. As the judges wrote, it's a professionally executed paper, a strong example of rhetorical strategies, and provides a cogent and persuasive analysis of how government should and shouldn't deploy technology on the populace. I'd like to say as one of the judges that when I read this, I thought, goodness, what was I up to when I was an undergraduate? <laughs> so I'd like to offer my heartiest congr congratulations to Hafsa. I wish you could be here, but congratulations very much. I hope I'm looking at you in the camera. Let's all join in a round of applause. Thank you very much. And can we now please have uh, Dr. Hirschfeld? Hi, um, Ken Hirschko. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I was uh, privileged to judge the Walter R. Martin English 251 Award, very catchy title. It's for uh, the best performance on a special exam given to nominated students who have taken English 251 in literary theory and criticism, which I think is pretty much every English student. But these students actually have to take a second exam. So this award is, a, you know, is, it, it deserves a lot of credit there. And the winner is Shauna Pochman or Pochman. Uh, her, uh, Shauna's essays for the exam uh, display the kind of attention to words and what words might imply that we expect in excellent literary criticism. It was an impressive demonstration of the art of criticism and a deserving winner of this award. I, I enjoyed very much reading it. So congratulations, Shauna, where you are remotely on this award. Okay, and the next award is the Janice Delmato Memorial Award in Creative Writing. It's given to an honors English student taking the creative writing specialization in the Faculty of Arts, and it's based on academic excellence and a sample of creative writing. And the winner this year is Nadia Formisano. So can you please come up? And the judges commented that this is a very beautiful story that shows tremendous poise and scene setting and pacing. The structure shows innovation and invention, but also a great deal of control in driving the story towards a cohesion that culminates in a dramatic ending. So congratulations, Emily. Thank you. And then Nadia is going to offer us a reading. You're welcome to use the other. The new cabinet doesn't creak when I pull open its doors. I thought the silence would have been a relief, but it echoed in my chest louder than the hinges ever did. This wasn't my grandpa's cupboard. This was wrong. I reach my hand in for a glass, trying not to mess up the neat rows they've been arranged in, and feel my fingers brush against something cold. My breath catches and I grab the cup, pulling it out slowly as if I'm afraid that the metal will warp in my hand. It seems so much smaller now than it did then. It barely spans the length of my palm and my fingers almost touch when I wrap them around it. It still is solid though, and the weight reminds me it would take much more strength than I have to bend the steel. I spin it in my fingers and see the little duck engraved on the brim. It looks spiffy in its little bow and as happy as ever. It seems to wink at me, seemingly brand new in the light. I lay the cup down on the shelf again, gently shutting the creaky cabinet as my grandmother rounds the corner and goes to light the stove. Nonna, mi dai latte? 
She turns as her granddaughter enters the room, both so excited that she gets to visit again. She's four and acts like it, practically jumping into her chair as she waits for her drink. Her grandfather tends to it instead, teasing her with a plain cup from the cupboard. The girl shakes her head and laughs, insisting on the metal cup. Her grandfather pretends not to know what she's talking about until he's gone through four more cups, but has to give in when she tells him that she wants the one with the ducky. He laughs and pours her milk into the correct cup at long last, and I watch her drink it while munching on the pastries her mother had bought that morning. Her grandfather sniggers when she's done and fills her cup for her again. She giggles back at him. Okay, those were the undergraduate awards, and now we're going to move on to the graduate awards. And uh, our first presenter is Dr. Paul Uber. <clears throat> Um, I know that most of the faculty members know me, but sort of students don't. So they're wondering who's this weird one. <laughs> I'm sure. So I'd use this opportunity and introduce myself. My, my name is Paul Ugo. Often people would ask me, how do you pronounce your last name? Is it Ugo or Ugo? It's actually Ugo, but if you can't, just pronounce it the way you can. Um, I joined the department uh, this year in January, so I'm relatively new around here. Uh, so it's the first time I'm meeting English majors in the department. So it's a pleasure uh, meeting you all. I envy most of my colleagues who are interacting with you already and enjoying all of the amazing work you're doing. So I hope I get to see you in most of my courses in the next couple of years. Um, yeah, so I'm pleased to announce uh, the um, Bell's Essay Prize for the master's category. It's the uh, for the best essay on literature submitted by an MA student. Uh, the winner is Hannah Gardner. Anna is here in person. And her paper is entitled Privileging Image and Vision in William Blake's Illustrations to the Book of Job. Um, and the judges noted that uh, the piece is a really lovely richly contextualized piece of work that does so many things well. Um, after making many sort of claims, uh, the writer lands very gracefully in a beautiful final paragraph with its elegant answer to the question of, so what? Uh, is Anna around? Okay, there's uh, apparently there's a second winner, and the second winner is um, Rebecca de Harvel, uh, who's attending remotely. Rebecca, I'm not sure that I pronounced your name correctly, but yeah, um, her essays are titled Moral Implications of Violence, Systemized um, Animal Cruelty, and Posthumanism in, in Cormac McCarthy's No Country for Old Humanist Men. And the judges noted that the essay employs a sophisticated animal studies theoretical approach and supports its claim with very fine, close textual analysis. Uh, we commend the essay's author for the insider work. Congrats, Anne. Um, it's my honor again to present uh, the best, uh, the Bell's Prize, which is uh, for the best uh, essay on literature submitted by uh, a PhD student. Uh, the winner who's here in person is Chris Rogers. Where's Chris? Okay. And Chris's essay is entitled From Commodification to Understanding, um, Reading Human-Animal Relations in Owen Winters, the Virginian, and Morning Doves. How do you spell that? Is it Kojiwea? Kojiwea, okay. Um, the the half-blood. And the judges noted that the essay explores the complexities of human and animal relations in the American West, and makes clear how the settler indigenous dimension is pertinent to the text 
it creates. It does so in a captivating manner with textual readings that are sensitive, nuanced, and fair. Congress, Chris. <laughs> okay, could I now call up, sorry, could I now call up Dr. John Savarese to present a few awards? Thank you. All right, so the first award uh, I have to give out here is the David Nimmo English Graduate Scholarship. Uh, and this award is given every year to a graduate student in the Department of English based on academic excellence. Uh, and this, this fund is made possible by a donation from David Clarence Nimmo in recognition of his formative years spent as an undergraduate student at the University of Waterloo in the Department of English Language and Literature. Uh, this is an award that uh, we're, we're privileged in this department to have um, students who compete for external funding from government agencies. Uh, and uh, those same competitions are what feed into the judging of this award too, uh, because we have such a um, really strong graduate level work going on in the department. Uh, this year, the David Nimmo uh, English Graduate Scholarship goes to Kim Lauren Lubin, who's here in person. <laughs> Uh, one of the things I get to do as graduate officer for the department is read uh, co-op work term reports. This is something that undergraduates no longer do, but graduate students do. And the nice thing about it is getting to see what their co-op placements are like and what kind of work they're doing in uh, all sorts of different fields. So the graduate co-op work report award uh, this year goes to Moira Slater, who's here in person, should come up. Um, and I want to just say that the report uh, describes a work term at the uh, the CRA, the Canada Revenue Agency, and uh, it deploys theories of content design, anecdotes from the work term, and information graphics in a way that exemplifies the very kind of clear communication the report is advocating uh, should be undertaken in public-facing <laughs> government agencies. An informative report to have read, and congratulations. <laughs> I call on Dr. Clive Forrester to come up. Okay, all right. So this award, the Graduate Creative Writing Award, uh, Prose and Poetry, for the best submission of either prose or poetry by a graduate student. Now, writing about war isn't easy. Sometimes a writer has to go into a different uh, space to write about war. But it seemed easy for this particular winner, Masa Torbika. The author cleverly uses metaphor and imagery to carry the reader on a journey through the ravages of war a powerful expression of emotion and thought that leaves the reader with a lasting impression. Congratulations to Masa Torbika. Thank you, Dr. Forrester. It's finally my last year, my last year here as a graduate student. So I'm going to start with two very important thank yous. 
Thank you to the department for having this Creative Writing Award for graduate students. It's been so meaningful to me uh, throughout my degree. I'm so excited about the future of creative writing at Waterloo and that it's expanding. Second, thank you, Dr. Dorothy Hadfield. The first English class of my university career was Dr. Hadfield's class at the University of Water of Guelph a long, long time ago. And I haven't taken graduate classes in creative writing, but Dr. Hadfield's office became my unofficial creative writing workshop throughout the degree. So this is my chance to say thank you. Uh, the content is far from cheerful, as Dr. Forrester said, it's, it's grim. I'll read the first part of a poem called Statecraft. He spits on a fingertip before pressing down again and again. In the orbiting clicks of the sole clock needle, minute and hour hands broken off before it was hung overhead. He sees rows of bodies, feel deep, marching as one set of footfalls. Hears thousands of mouths rallying to repeat two shout split syllables, leader, leader, the bubbling foam hacks like an axe at the joints between ink and paper until the bleeding letters swell into marks warping the map, morphing villages into boils. He must and will lance. Thank you. Um, the next award uh, is for uh, the Independent Graduate Instructor Award for Excellence in Teaching. And this is given for the best performance as an independent graduate instructor based on a teaching portfolio and references. And the judge, Dr. Randy Harris, said that his job of choosing one winner was quite difficult this year, and he congratulates all the applicants for the award. The winner this year is Tobin Rasico, who is attending remotely. And the comments uh, for this award were that Tobin's teaching has been a boon to the department for years at all levels, but he has shone most brightly in his independent teaching when the reins are fully his. As one of his students put it, Tobin's teaching is awesome. So congratulations. And I'd like to call Dr. Savarese back up. Or some awards. Great, so the next award is the Jack Gray Graduate Fellowship Award, uh, which goes to a graduate student uh, who has demonstrated outstanding academic performance, and again, uh, on the basis of uh, competitions for external funding, such as the Shirk uh, Scholarship and, and the OGS Ontario Graduate Scholarship. Uh, this year, the Jack Gray Graduate Fellowship Award goes to Kelly Schwinard. And uh, I'm pleased to announce uh, one more award here, the Lee Vogel Nimmo English Graduate Professionalization Award, which is an award that um, assists in the professionalization of graduate students. Um, it's judged based on academic merit and the merit of their proposed professionalization activities. But I should say what that, that ranges everywhere from, you know, going to conferences, um, registering for trainings and workshops in different fields to acquire different skills, all the way to archival research uh, trips, to places to go, go and do hands-on research. Uh, this fund is made possible by a donation from David Clarence Nimmo in memory of his late wife, Lee Vogel Nimmo, who via the generosity of others was given opportunities to develop her artistic talent and reach her professional goals. Uh, and we have uh, three winners in person here. We're pleased to be able to give out three of these awards this year. Uh, to Hamar Shoib, Lara El Makawi, and Valerie Uher.
Could I? Oh, sorry. Oh, Steve, oh, sure, please. No problem. Take care. Uh, could I call up Dr. Jen Clary Lemon? I'm so pleased to announce uh, the winner of the Rhetoric Essay Prize, Master of Arts, for the best essay on rhetoric and associated fields submitted by a graduate student. This year's winner is Sarah Casey. Um, and these are the comments that the judges had about, uh, about her essay. The sustained analysis of a rigorous method contributes new complexities, pulling at the nuances of classic logocentric systems while acknowledging the work Rigore does in helping dislo dislocate common assumptions about rhetoric in the realm of the possible. And if anyone's ever read Rigore, they would know this is a very difficult job. So well done, Sarah. <laughs> Right. It's my pleasure next to uh, hand out the TA Award for Excellence in Teaching. And uh, yes, by a TA. Um, and uh, I just want to say I've taught or I've worked with so many of you as TAs in the department, so many grad students, and it's a, it's a great joy to um, to be part of the process of teaching with you, to be teaching you and to be teaching with you. And TAs do so much important work for our department and they are invaluable in terms of um, helping our undergraduate students to progress in their study of English. So this is for the best performance as a teacher, by a teaching, as a teaching assistant by a graduate student based on a teaching portfolio and references. And the winner this year is Chris Martin. The judges said that Chris TA, the third year rhetoric course meticulously and collegially giving supportive, specific and appropriate feedback on all the assignments and his two lectures in another course were energetic, passionate, thoroughly informed and engaging. All right. Uh, the next award we'll be giving out is the W.K. Thomas Graduate Scholarship. Uh, this is a co-winner. The other co-winner is not here, so will be included later in the ceremony. This is awarded to an outstanding student who holds uh, an Ontario Graduate Scholarship. And our, uh, our first of our two winners this year uh, is Dakota David Pinhairo, who's attending remotely. Congratulations, Dakota. We'll now move on to people who, uh, students who were unable to attend the ceremony either in person or remotely, and to uh, give these presentations, I will call on Dr. Dorothy Hatfield. Hi, it's inevitable that some of our fabulous students are not able to attend because they're off doing other really exciting things, either uh, with school or with work, um, but they still deserve um, to be recognized for their contributions to the department and for the excellent caliber of their work. Uh, and uh, so I'm happy to, um, to uh, present these awards. When I saw the list, I was like, I know all of these students, I've taught them, so that was really exciting. Uh, the first of these awards is the Andrew James Dugan Prize in Rhetoric and Professional Writing, um, uh, which goes to Chinyo Obiago for uh, her work of technical communication, professional writing, textual editing, or paper-based design. Uh, Chinyo was another student that I taught in her very first English class uh, at this university. So this is really exciting. The title of her submission was, Can My Sisters Get Some Adequate Healthcare Over Here? 
And uh, the judges noted that in addition to being well-written, artfully organized, and carefully argued, this essay is ingenious in its realistic portrayal of a fictitious activist group seeking to redress inequities facing women of color in the Canadian healthcare system, an incredibly vital crossover between the real world and work being done in courses. So congratulations, Jenny, on that essay. The next award is for the Co-op Reflective Report Award. So the the what the co-op work reports have evolved into. Uh, and this is another uh, category near and dear to my heart because I wrote a lot of work reports when I did my undergrad in co-op English here. Um, so this is uh, given for the best reflective report written by a co-op student as part of their professional development course requirements. And the winner this year is Hannah Freitas with a report that rose above the specific situation to consider more broadly the issue of problem solving and then effectively applied her considerations to analyze her own thinking process. That's well done, Anna, on that. Congratulations. And now uh, some graduate awards for grad students who are unable to attend today. And some of these will you will have seen uh, co-winners already been uh, presented for some of these. Uh, the English Graduate Award for Academic Excellence, which is um, awarded for academic excellence uh, to a third or fourth year student who doesn't currently hold uh, external funding. And the winner for that this year is Alexander Franicek. Alexander would be staying up here if he were actually here to attend, uh, because he is also being awarded the one of the Leah Vogel Nimmo uh, English Graduate Professionalization Awards that uh, you already heard about that are awarded to assist in some kind of professionalization activity uh, for our graduate students, um, but it is also based in uh, academic merit and their the proposal that they submit about what they would like to have funded and Alexander is also uh, Alexander Franicek is also a winner of that award. And finally, uh, one of the co-winners of the W.K. Thomas Graduate Scholarship. Uh, W.K. Thomas was one of my professors when I was here, so I always have a, a warm fuzzy about this award uh, in his honor. Um, it's awarded to an outstanding student who holds an Ontario Graduate Scholarship, and the winner this year is Melissa Johnson. Congratulations. Okay, well, thank you, everyone. That brings this year's awards ceremony to a close. I have a few thank yous to make now. We'd like to thank Margaret and Deb, who probably can't hear us, <laughs> for all their hard work and support on the awards portfolio all year long, for pre preparing the award money and certificates, and especially for making this event what it is. Thank you to our co-op students, Jess Awad and David Pomatubon, for all their tech support today, and to Jess for designing the slideshow and ceremony theme, and to David for his photography and for being the digital bouncer today in the Zoom space. <laughs> and thank you to Dr. Victoria Lamont and Dr. John Severis for, uh, as undergrad and graduate officers for their ongoing work managing the awards that are in their purview a year long, and to Jen McCaig, McCaig and Arts Advancement for administering many of our awards. And thank you especially to our generous donors. Um, many of our awards were created by former students of our department uh, or the families of our most cherished faculty members to honor their memories and contributions to the intellectual life of the department. Their ongoing support makes it possible to celebrate each new generation of students and their accomplishments. Finally, thank you to all our students for taking risks, for believing in your ideas and your writing and creating and for sharing it with us. Keep up the good work. <laughs>